How to get hired at Amazon Canada? We'll discuss in this video. Hey everyone, I'm your average guide Sahil Gogna. Welcome back to another video. So in today's video, we have a University of Toronto graduate Pulkit Mathur who is currently working at Amazon Canada. And in today's video, we are going to look into everything you need to know to get into Amazon Canada. So before we start the conversation, can you please introduce yourself to the audience? Yeah, sure. Uh, so to the audience, like my name is Pulkit Mathur and to give a brief history about myself, I graduated from Thapu University, like that's the place I did my bachelor's and I graduated in 2017. The concentration that I was in was in computer science. Then I got a chance to go to, like I got a chance to work at first uh, BlackRock for a few months. That was my internship. Then to the HSBC, like that was my financial sector. I was working still as a software developer over there. And then, got, then I got a chance to go to University of Toronto. If you might have heard about that university, that's in Canada. And I got a chance to do my master's in um, machine learning. So that's where I focused my interest. And I got and again a chance, like eight months of internship at one of the hospital. Like there is a research department where you can focus on the healthcare work and apply some machine learning algorithms over there. And then eventually I got a chance to jump to Amazon Web Services and right now I am in Amazon. That's a very interesting journey, Pulkit. And Pulkit, how did you apply for your current role at Amazon? Oh, that's an interesting journey. So um, I was back in Toronto and then um, I think it's, I would give credit to like my undergrad alumni network. So here we have like a different WhatsApp group, LinkedIn group, and uh, there someone posted out that they are open to give some referral. Then I thought of like making call to that person and I provided my resume and shared the roles that I was interested in. Uh, fortunately, that helped me to fetch the first interview. Does it really matter from where you graduate to apply at the companies just like Amazon or the other big tech companies? So does your educational background matters? Okay, uh, I'll be frank about it. Like, I think it does for a certain duration of time, like not much because like, uh, as in if I'm suppose an HR and if I'm looking for an individual to hire or reach out, then I would look at their LinkedIn profile. And then if you're just graduated, then I might look for which university you graduated or which course you have pursued and does it align with the job. But eventually, once you gain some experience, um, depending on what you have done, I think that doesn't matter like from where you have graduated or what you exactly have done. It's more about like, uh, at least here in North America, it's what you can do and what skills you have. So I, th I would say like initial days after graduating, yes, but like eventually one year down the line, I would say that doesn't matter a lot. And if we talk specifically about the interviews, so how many in number of interviews were there for the role that you are currently in Amazon? Yeah, so it depends on different kinds of roles. So the one that I applied for was software development engineer. So that was the first uh, like entry round for software development. But then you have like senior software development and then like SG2s and then uh, there are other roles like applied scientists or research scientists. Uh, for specifically for my role, uh, since they're hiring for the entry point of the software development, they are looking for that I'm pretty good with the data structures, algorithms, my, I have a debugging spill, skills, and specific with Amazon, they do look for skills that aligns with their learning principle. Uh, I'm not sure if mm -hmm. you have heard about it, but they have a set of principles like as an Amazon, uh, and they want people to, uh, to be aligned with them. And like I can give a brief introduction, like principles would be like, uh, the one would be mm, learn and be curious. So that says like, you should always be curious when you are working in a job. Second would be ownership. So whatever things you are working, you should take an ownership of that. And um, specific to Amazon, when they are looking or hiring you, they want to see that you have done such kind of things in your past. Like you have taken an ownership uh, of your project, done it from end to end. You have like a customer obsession. So like suppose you are making a website for a company and that, that's a good thing that you're taking ownership, but at the same time, you have to collect from like feedback from customer and you're pretty much focused towards the customer. So like that's your um, like main objective that your customer should be satisfied at the end. And were there any specific number of interviews that you went through to get your role? I mean, is, are the all, all the interviews focused on DSL go or like how were the interviews divided? Can you please walk us through each and every interview that you went through? 
definitely so there was uh, four rounds of interviews actually three rounds of interviews and the fourth round was like an hr round so the first uh, first round was like a coding round so uh, with the, that doesn't involve any human interaction so they just send out a link where you just open and uh, i remember as far as i remember that was 60 minutes or 45 minutes of round where uh, you have a set of mcqs like i think there were 13 30 mcqs uh, that sees you basically that you have uh, debugging skills you understand the coding languages and then uh, it's it's a pretty straightforward like not that complex to be honest and then they give you two coding uh, questions to solve within a set of time uh, it could be it, it is specifically related to like data structures and the algorithms so for those kind of questions like i would recommend people going to a uh, competitive website like lead code and doing their medium and hard type of questions that would definitely help and once that round was complete i think that was a cut off round so you have to be like you have to pass a bare minimum uh, to go to the next round so um, fortunately i was able to do that and then the second round what they look for is like big actually that happened during the lockdown so usually second round they go they call you on site and then ask for coding questions but when i was appearing like it was a kind of a lockdown situation so the second round is they give you a uh, hypothetical situations so um, like it, it's a nice setup that they have done so once you open the link you have an a uh, different world where you see like uh, um you have a inbox uh you have lots of um, online there are lots of things going in the background so like, it's a real world of amazon and they want to see that how you will you react to different situations so suppose um amazon went down so th- like this was one of the questions so there was a website that went down and then they asked me to debug and then at the same time they are also looking me that how i am escalating this issue like whether i am just taking it on my own and just letting the amazon stay like down for an hour or i am escalating to my manager and i am escalating to my skip manager and letting them know that this is a big issue and this need to be resolved like even if it is at the non office hours so this like they put you in an actual scenario and then test you out like how will you react so that was the second round and it was a bit lengthy it like the one and a half hours as far as i remember and then the third round is where the you start having interaction with individual so the third round is uh, you have an interaction and they ask you normal questions based on your resumes and then few of the coding questions um so that is that third round is totally depends on how you have performed in the first two rounds so if you have performed really well and then the their focus is more towards your resume and then how you perform in the very first round like what kind like how did you approach to your coding questions so like suppose the first round has two coding questions then they will ask you like what was your mental like thought process going on why did you didn't apply it for the brute force approach or how did you come up with this new approach or like was it your first try they were like actually looking like have you have like solved this question before or did were you like able to figure out the solution at the spot so those kind of things that they are trying to figure out and obviously they are trying to figure out your thought process and the third thing is like they are also seeing that whether you can communicate your thoughts to the other people so if you can communicate like how you are able to come up with the solution to the person who is like interviewing you that is really good so and again suppose it it happens like it happens with individual it's not that their skills are not good except times your first round didn't went well so in the third round they might ask you again some uh, coding questions just to evaluate you and give you another chance and if that happens like uh, if that went good and then it might go for a fourth round just for like extra confirmation but if you perform in first two rounds like quite good and then the third round is more focused like how you approach your first round like those two coding question and then they ask questions on your resume like these kind of projects what kind of things you have tackled and then they at the same time the person is also looking like how your previous projects or the work or the experience you have gained how that aligns with amazon learning principles mm-hmm. so and uh, they write down their feedback and if they are multi- people people they share the feedback at the end of the interview that like, that's how amazon interview works and then they evaluate like okay to sum up all the process that you have said till now so the first round was the coding interview plus the mcqs right and the first round was completely focused upon your thought process how you how much you know about the computer programming and skills right so the second question is the second round it was 
mainly focused on a hypothetical scenario in which they were actually looking for whether you have a right programming mindset or not and how you actually approach a problem right and the third and the third round was basically it, it, it depends upon the first two rounds if they if they went well so they might ask you about your resume and your projects and also they might ask you some more dsl go questions to just verify your profile and also they can discuss the approaches that you went for in the first two rounds yeah i think that in the third round the discussion of approach is like a mandatory thing that they always do because it okay. could happen like in the first round since there was, there was no human involved like you could have asked your friend or someone else to solve that for you like it does happen uh, and i i was just frank about it so uh, they just want to verify that was it you or uh, then they look for the thought process so they don't want you to come up with the best solution within 5 minutes that is not even possible so i think it's always a good approach when you clear the first round to always look for alternative solutions of the codes that you have written in the first round so that even if you have written a brute force course you can always give them a, a best better solution while you are you are in the interview in the in the third round exactly and even for the scenario like where you know the best solution right. and you are able to write the solution within 15 minutes like that happened with me like the interviewer was surprised like how you are able to come up with this 15 minute like solution in 15 minutes like usually it takes around 30 minutes like mm -hmm. uh, they were like they obviously they have an assumption like did i copy paste it from somewhere did i know this before uh, like then you have to express like how you come up with this i just said like like um when i was thinking about that i was start taking mm -hmm. the other question and the thought mm -hmm. process was going in my back in my mind like i have the brute force solution but you already mentioned in the question that you have to come up with possible. the best uh, solution possible. possible so definitely that not, def definitely that would not be a brute force and it will waste time for me to write a brute force solution so those kind of questions will definitely be they look for you like how much confident are you in your answering questions uh, so they're not looking like do you know like hash map or trees or something like that they're looking that is it was it you and okay. if it is you what was your thinking process so so that if any problem comes in amazon or it's not always be an algorithm or ds but mm -hmm. will you be able to thought and optimize and the uh, and pulkit we all know that data structures and algorithm they play an important role in your interviews and also the core computing subjects like the system design like the operating systems right so my question is that if a student is preparing for amazon how much they should divide their focus i mean should they just focus on data structures and algorithm or they should also focus on core computing subjects and should or should they focus on projects so how the ratio is divided in the interviews so it totally depends on what kind of position they are applying so i can divide the position into okay. multiple categories so first would mm -hmm. be like the software development which is pure software development and mm -hmm. if if he, he is a student and has like a one year of experience or two years of experience then it would be an entry role Uh, most probably so in that case the, what amazon is looking for is that person is very much equipped with knowledge of data structures and algorithms and then they have a uh, debugging mindset they know how to uh, dive deep and understand the problem and take the ownership so those kind of things that they should tackle and for that uh, just for on the technical side uh, doing the like a medium to the hard questions on the lead code would be sufficient so that's a nice website uh, to look into and then uh, for those things like um, uh, they should definitely looks for amazon learning principle so you can just google it out and for all the uh, cases like for, for all the different categories that i'm going to talk about you definitely have to look for amazon learning principles and then you have to make your resume in such a way that those your projects or whatever done like whatever projects or whatever experience you have done in the past should align with those principles so that will definitely help you to grab some extra point during the interviews so that is for a student who has a, like a year of experience or two years of experience and want to apply for software development for the people who have more than like two years of experience and has graduated recently or want to apply for amazon they definitely want to go for sg2s so in that case like system design questions definitely going to come and that would be having like a more rounds of interviews so for system design there are lots of uh, online like youtube channels that they can look into they are also good courses uh, i i don't remember the exact course but uh, there is a one course nice course in udemy uh, maybe i can share the link later on uh, so those kind of course uh, helps a lot but again uh, there's two things expect a system design first is like you learning the theoretical knowledge the second is like you are having an experience with the system design so it's better like whatever 
from the starting of your career like it's better to approach a problem as a system design how you're solving it and understanding how the people other people have solved it so that will definitely help you to crack the interviews later on in your life and then there would be third category which would be uh, like machine learning and applied scientist so that's specifically focused uh, so in those cases you don't have to focus much on your data structure algorithm all you need to focus is on your papers that you have published uh, able to explain them uh, and then the most probably the interviewers will be like a phd or a person who has already like a lot of experience in those things so in those scenarios like you have like pretty much expert in the domain that you are applying for whether it is nlp or computer vision and then um, like you should be aware of the state of the art technology going on and tulkit if we talk specifically about the project so what type of projects do you feel that uh, can make an impact if you mention in your resume and are the university projects good enough to get into amazon yeah so that that's a nice uh, question so um, maybe i'll start with the last point that you raised like are the university projects are good enough to get into amazon uh, yes definitely it is my like the important thing over there is like how you are able to demonstrate that so suppose if i work on a website but that website is not there uh, online or i can't share that with the person who is interviewing me then yes he can believe me in whatever i'm saying he can believe me maybe i can share the screenshot or whatever but like, it would be nice to have that online running up Uh, so that you can demonstrate what you have did uh, so that's the one thing so even if you are doing some university project either like university project could be on an individual level uh, maybe some making a website or something like that or it could be like collaboration with uh, other companies so they are like at least in north america you usually collaborate with other companies like suppose if i want to have like if you want to make a website i'll just collaborate with a the company they'll help me as an intern i'll make a website for them and they might use it later on so what i can do is when i was an interview i can just directly share the link to them so this is the work i have done and this is the area that i have contributed to so they can directly validate it so they don't have to just go by my words they can actually see what i have done so those kind of things you can focus on uh, making whatever you have done it doesn't need to be online always but if you can demonstrate some maybe through a github repo and showing up your comet history or something like that that will definitely help or maybe if you have published a paper um, then definitely you can share the link of the paper okay and pulkit if we talk specifically about your role at amazon as and like you were hired at uh, amazon aws right so are there any specific skills that you would suggest students or any professionals who want to apply for this role to develop before uh, before actually getting into amazon so like what type of skills they they can develop so that it will be helpful for them in the interviews specifically in the interviews uh, so in that case i think uh, uh, in north america what i feel is like people are looking how well you are able to communicate uh, mm-hmm. between each other uh, and then they also looking that how how well you are able to gain trust so if you are working in other previous old companies and if your manager can support that okay this is a nice individual i have got a chance to work with uh or maybe you have a story around that uh, where you are able to gain a trust or where the company is facing an issue and you are able to resolve that issue those kind of things uh, definitely helps so uh, amazon is not about like learning java or learning c++ or any other language is more about like you you might encounter any language like i, I don't know like i have encountered like lots of languages since i joined amazon uh and i don't know no, i don't have knowledge of all those languages like right now also i don't have like, knowledge of all those languages but if you're given a problem you know how to go deep inside that problem figure out wh- wh- where it is coming from so that definitely helps like a lot so at at least in amazon so you you might go for an on call so there is an all call shift that usually happens in amazon so whatever services you are building you are also responsible for maintaining those services so if something goes wrong you know like how to go inside like where to where this is problem is coming from and how to resolve that problem so if you have like if you can build your knowledge around that that will definitely help it doesn't come from like uh, going and pursuing a course it comes from your experience that you gain from either from an internship or whatever past work you have happened or like the capstan project like um, you might have collaborated with lots of people in your uh, university so uh like letting all the people agree on the same thing uh leading that project and pulkit if we talk about work life balance so how is that at amazon so and and specifically i would like to know that 
how stressful it can be while working at the big tech companies like Amazon. So what's your experience till now? Uh, so strangely, so the country that I come from is India. So uh, I haven't heard like a great uh, like feedback from the people back in India, like Amazon has a nice work culture, but fortunately, uh, North America, at least I can say that uh, I haven't worked like after 5 p.m. in the evening. So that's a nice thing. Um, I think uh, it's more about like how you're able to deliver your things uh, here. And they all always care that you are working within the office hours and you're not working after that. Uh, but in terms of load, so it depends on your individual level, how much you want to take the ownership of. So either you can work on a regular basis and just complete whatever task you are assigned, or you can look in a broader perspective and you see that this problem is already existing and you want to solve it. So you take the initiative and solve it and then come up with a solution, tell it to your manager. So that's an extra work that you're doing on your own. Uh, but beside that, uh, uh, yes, sometimes the workload, it's not happen often, but sometimes the workload can go high uh, depending on the situation. So. Suppose you are uh, primarily responsible for handling issues that are coming. So by issues, I mean that your service is down or a uh, customer is facing an issue and you are only responsible at that particular week. So you have to tackle those kind of situation and then uh, that might require extra work, maybe, maybe opening your laptop around 2 a.m. in the night and then solving that issue and then closing it down. And Pulkit, we have reached at the end of our conversation. And before we end our conversation, any final advice to the people who are watching our video? Okay, I think my final advice would be uh, the big big companies are definitely get good to get into. But even if you are not able to get into, like it doesn't matter. Uh, one year of experience or two years of experience will definitely help to attract like the HR thing, like in Amazon or any of the big companies to grab you an interview. So. I think the best thing would be for you or, or the people who are watching this video is like keep practicing your uh, data structure algorithm skills that that will be applied for all the position that you will be applying across all the companies. So you should have those knowledge and then keep brushing your system design skills. So you, you never know that when the interview comes at your door. So that's advice. That is, well, that is the only advice I can give. Thanks a lot, Pulkit, for your valuable time. It was really, really a great conversation and, and I enjoyed a lot. Thank you, Fulkit. So guys, this was our today's video about Amazon Canada and I hope you have learned a lot from this video. In case you have any particular questions about software development industry here in Canada, make sure to comment your questions down in the comment section below because I will be doing a Q&A video very soon. Subscribe to our channel Let's Grow as a community. You can connect with me on Instagram. See you in the next video. Till then, stay safe.